Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here this Sunday. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world right now. Uh, we got a situation with Deutsche Bank. Well, actually, there's two problems out there right now that are that are the most. Uh, either one could erupt into huge problems. One is Iran. Over and, and the other one is uh, is Deutsche Bank. These are the two most pressing problems right now. And you know, the Iranians. Every time, like with the whole thing about the ships, uh, it's been ongoing for a while now. And the Iranians have always said, "No, it's not us. We're not doing it." No. And you know, there's been the the question out there, and an awful lot of people have posed and thought that, "Hey, you know what? These are all false flags." Well, you got a video right now of Iranians coming down off of a helicopter onto the deck of a ship now and, and seizing it. Now, there's a big difference, you know, between what we did with their ship. We detained their ship for good reason. They were violating law. They were violating sanctions. So we detained their ship. They, in turn reacted and they've seized our ship. It's a big difference because this ship that they seized was doing nothing wrong. Nothing wrong at all. Not in violation of anything. Now they tried to make a big excuse why they were seizing it. They said they put a fishing what they did was they actually came up and put a fishing boat, an old an old piece of junk, in front of the tanker. They pulled it right in front of the tanker, and then they then they said, "Oh well, the tanker is 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 violating law because it's going to hit the fishing ship." Yeah, the fishing ship pulled right in front of it. I mean, these big tankers, you just can't stop them. They're full of crude oil. They're going in the sea really fast, you know. And and if you pull a fishing boat in front of it, I mean, they, they can't stop. So that was their excuse to seize the tanker. But they did it anyway. They seized the tank. Nobody's buying this whole thing about the fishing boat thing and the reason why. They actually took it. And the tanker was violating no laws whatsoever. They took it. This 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 latest action by Iran kind of shows you that these other actions that happened before that Iran said we didn't do it. Well, the question mark, was it a false flag or not? I mean, myself... Uh, you know, I, I didn't, uh, uh, wasn't out there saying anything about uh, these uh, uh, actions too much because uh, false flags do happen. But in this case, I don't think it's any false flag. I think Iran is, is this kind of shows a, a progression of their, of their actions leading up to this Caesar seizure of a British ship that wasn't doing anything wrong. You know? But now, what's the escalating effect of all of this? Is the United Kingdom is sailing their warships into the area. And they're, they're upset. They're very upset. I don't blame them for being upset at Iran's actions. Will there be more? Well, let's hope not, but at this point, I don't think that the Allied forces, the West, is going to take much more at this point. And, you know, there's always been something. Every couple of days, all the way through this situation, there's always been something happening, some, some more, right? And I don't think the West is willing to take any more at this point. I think any, any more uh, actions from Iran, and I think it could lead very well lead to war. And so we got that going on. And, and of course, you know, actions have been happening every couple days. So what's the next one? The next one might be the last straw that the West is willing to take. The next action. So now we're in a waiting game here with this. But by gosh, it sure does look like it's leading to something much bigger, an escalation of this situation in around the Gulf of Oman and the Strait of Hormuz. And I'm going to tell you what, an awful lot of oil passes through that region. I would suggest that you guys, today, 
get in your car, drive down to your local gas station, and fill your car up. If you got a truck, fill your truck up too. Top off your tanks. Because this time next week, the price might be double. Could be double in a week. That's how quick it could go up if, if this thing breaks into a full scale of what it could break into. And you could see, over a course of several months, the gas price more than double, triple. This is, could be the effect. So you'll save yourself a little bit of money. Right now, it might be a smart idea to fill up your tanks. I'm going to run down to the gas station today, and I'm not just, now, I'm not recommending you guys fill up gas cans. Why I'm not recommending that is because gas cans can be dangerous to have a can of gas around, you know, and everything else. But I'm going to fill up my gas can and my gas tank. That's what I'm going to do. Now, anyway, moving on to further news, we got Deutsche Bank. The world's most systemically dangerous bank. And the reason why is, is because of their derivatives book. Massive, massive derivatives book. Uh, something like $45 trillion. And, you know, if Deutsche Bank goes down, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. The world's central banks are going to have to make that derivatives book whole again. Otherwise, the whole system's going to lock up, and it's going to stay locked up until the World Bank does the world's banks does something about the situation. If Deutsche Bank goes down, there's only one thing they can do: they have to they have to fix the hole it would create. It's like it's like a pothole on your highway, you know, in front of your house. If you get a big pothole and it's breaking people's axles, people drive down the road, bang, boom. And they pull over, they got a busted tire. Well, there's only one way to fix that. You got to fill the hole. What do you fill it with? There's only one thing to fill it with asphalt. Well, in this case, if Deutsche Bank goes down, it's going to make a giant pothole. It's going to break the world's financial system. And there's only one way to fill it with money. It's the only way you fix it. But if they have to fill a $45 trillion hole, pothole, then what's going to happen is, is they're going to immediately start us into the hyperinflation of the dollar. And all the world's currencies are pegged to the dollar. And so if the dollar goes down, everything goes down with it. Then what this would mean is, is the entire world would have to start paying more for everything. But salaries are not going to go up quick enough. This means extensive poverty. Worldwide poverty. This means an increase in the homeless in every country on earth. Nothing less. This also means an enormous movement into gold and silver. That's what it would mean. You know? And as we descend into this upcoming recession, this is going to make Deutsche Bank go down all the quicker. Along with a lot of other systemically dangerous banks. We're facing the turmoil is finally starting to arrive. Because even if we make it out of this situation with Deutsche Bank, even if we glide through this situation and the Gulf cools down and nothing happens in the Gulf, we're heading into a recession. And when this recession happens, then we're going to see massive, enormous problems occur within the, world's, the structure of the world's financial system. So we're not... I'll tell you what, these problems that stand in front of us right now, we're not going to escape them all. We can't. There's too many. There's getting to be too many now. I know we've escaped ever since the, the great financial crisis of 2008 until now. We've somehow dodged a hundred different bullets coming at us. We've been able, successful at keeping this system running for the last over ten years. The system actually died in 2008 and the systematic crisis that occurred then. And what's happening now is, is now we're going into the final, final stage where we're going to enter into the most massive depression that the world has ever went into. And there's no way out. 
We're not going to escape this time. Like we did before. All of our avenues for escape are being filled up and blocked. Like right now. How high, it, it, how high, how high are the rates? They don't have that as a tool anymore. The Federal Reserve had that as a tool but during the last recession. They were able to lower rates. Rates are down near bottom right now. They can't lower them. They don't have that as a tool. Yeah, they can lower them a couple basis points, but what's that going to do? It's not going to do a lot because everybody's tapped out. We've we've expanded this credit cycle into the final conclusion of this credit cycle. And it only yields one last tool that they have, and that's monetary stimulus, but monster monetary stimulus. And that's what's coming, guys. Expect it. It's coming down the pike, and it's coming fast. So listen. Hope you guys are having a good Sunday. And... Uh, I'm going to keep keeping my eye on these world situations very carefully this week. Watching what happens, watching the news, digging to try to find out more information about the, than just contained in the ordinary news. And keeping you guys updated. Thank you for listening to my show. Give me a thumbs up and we'll catch you guys a Monday morning or, or, or unless it's a holiday. I, I hate these Monday holidays, you know. But anyway. I'll check and see if it's a holiday. But if it's no holiday, I'll be on tomorrow morning. <laughs> Happy to do my report for you guys, and we'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye, guys.